What's up Average Dad fans, welcome back to another video and today is the full review of the OnePlus Watch 2. Yes, I've had this on my wrist for over a week now and while it might be perfect for some, including me, it's not perfect for all. Let's go! Now before I talk about the potentially negative points, I do want to touch on all the good. And my goodness, for me, there are a lot of good points about the OnePlus Watch 2. Firstly, the design. Yes, the screen is slightly exposed, I will give you that. But if you look past the fact that, you know, not everyone's an outdoor, rugged, spurlunker, cave diving athlete, in day-to-day -day life, going to the office, working at a desk, you're not going to damage or ruin this watch. The stainless steel... 47mm casing is just stunning. Now it comes in two colours. I went for the radiant steel, which is like the polished glossy one. And I just think it looks so classy on the wrist. And we talked about work there. For me, the OnePlus Watch 2 is a watch you can wear in any environment, including obviously swimming, because it is full IP68 water and dust resistance, so you can swim away to your heart's content. Now, don't go deep sea diving, past 50 meters at any point, but most of us don't do that. Now, as far as the display, it's 1.4 inches with a thousand nits peak brightness. Me, with my eye condition, I can read the text completely fine, which trust me, not all the time is that possible with some smartwatches. Now it's bright at a thousand nits, so indirect sunlight, I can still read texts and the time. And I have to say, the bezels on this thing are completely acceptable. Somebody commented that the bezels are way too thick. Have you looked at the Samsung Galaxy Watch or the Pixel Watch? I'm sorry, the OnePlus Watch 2's bezels are not thick at all. And then to cap off the overall aesthetic and design, there's a silicon strap included, which can be interchangeable with third-party brands. But comfort-wise, on the wrist, this strap has been perfect. So overall design wise OnePlus have nailed it in my opinion. Now internally this is where most of the magic happens. We'll get to the battery life but I just want to explain a few things. Inside is the Snapdragon W5 chip but it's also paired with an RTOS chip. Ultimately the battery savings you get from all the heart rate pedometer any of the kind of behind the scenes fitness tracking, any of the behind the scenes health data and tracking is done by that less powerful chip saving battery. When you turn on the display, when you want to do a workout or a reply to a message, then the Wear OS 4, the Snapdragon chip kicks in. And all of that leads to one of the key factors that you should consider when buying a smartwatch battery life. I personally have experienced three and a half days. So I've charged it, taken it off charge one morning, it's then lasted three full days and then the other day until about dinner time. And that is with workouts, replying to messages, somebody in the comments asked if you can reply direct from the watch. You absolutely can, you can reply via voice, use the keyboard, use quick actions. Yeah, it's full Wear OS 4, everything works. Now sticking with the battery, just to pop in some context here. I made a video comparing it to the Apple Watch Ultra and the Tag Heuer Connected. Well, I just want to extend upon that. In my time, I have used many, many smartwatches from TicWatch and Oppo and Huawei. Other than the Huawei Ultimate and the Huawei GT3 Pro, I believe, the OnePlus Watch 2 has the best battery life of any Android watch or Huawei watch. And that's with obviously the full AMOLED screen. Where you can obviously get better battery life is with a Garmin. But that ain't full Wear OS 4. That is not an AMOLED screen. So the battery life with the screen Z use is less impressive when you factor in all of that. Now I mentioned about a bit of 
connectivity here and how you can reply to messages on here. You can also answer, make phone calls. However, all of this has to be done with the phone on your possession. The phone has to be nearby because it's not cellular. You can't put an eSIM. Well, you wouldn't put an eSIM, but you can't connect an eSIM here either. It's all functioned through the Bluetooth connectivity with your phone. So if you are looking for a watch that you can just leave your phone behind to go to the office or for a run and still be connected to the outside world, this isn't the one for you. Now, for majority of people, that doesn't mean anything. What you can do is download all the music you want onto this watch, connect your earbuds, leave your phone behind and get some peace for a change and go for a long walk, go for a run or whatever you want to do with the watch on, listening to music without having to carry around a phone. Which for me is super handy because I hate having to carry about a phone when I'm out for a walk or going for a run or even in the gym to be honest. I like to keep that phone in the locker and just be focused on my session. Now, this is all sounding very grey and to cap it all off, the price is £299, which puts it right in line with the TicWatch 5 Pro, the Samsung Galaxy Watch non-classic, and for me, this is a far superior watch than those. However, it's all subjective, those are also good watches. But where the OnePlus watch falls down is nothing to do with the watch. It's to do with the app that you have to connect it to. Now it's not horrific. Well, well it is pretty bad to be fair. Of all the watch, so watch OS app, the wearables app from Galaxy, all the other fitness app trackers and watch faces and everything you can do in app, the O Health app is absolutely the worst interface I've seen. The other issue is, and Michael Fisher, Mr. Mobile, mentioned this, and I'm so glad he did because I'm about to, which means more people will hear about it from him, the fitness tracking. While it is handy to go for a run without having to take your phone, it would be nice to accurately measure my run. For example, I have a 3.1 mile route, a 5 kilometre route that I run. Not as regular as I used to, but I did with this watch on. It came out as 2.7 miles one day and then 3.3 miles one day. One day I'd done the same walk to and from school for a drop off and it told me I'd done 6,000 steps. The next day it told me I'd done 9,000 steps. Same thing, nothing else. I put it on before I left the house, done that same walk to and from. So the fitness tracking, the pedometer in here something's obviously off or it's a gps whatever it is the good thing about that is i strongly believe that this can be fixed with a software update but it would only be right that i mentioned it to you and after all i've said about the design and the look and the size of the watch there has to be a consideration that if you are a well you don't have to be a female but if you're someone with smaller wrists than me I think they're like 20 centimetres round. I'm sure that's what they are. Anyway, if you've got smaller wrists, a 47 millimetre watch is not the one for you. You might want to consider the Samsung Galaxy watch, the 40 millimetre version, or a 42 millimetre Apple watch, something along those lines. 45, 46, 47 is just going to look too big. While OnePlus carry it off well, that is due to the wrist size. Now the important part, you know me, I like to switch my tech all the time. It's very rare that I'll stick with the same phone or watch for a long period of time. However, like the Apple Watch Ultra that I have and continue to use all the time, it's linked to my Peloton bike so I always use it, like that I now have a firm Android Wear OS watch. Yes, the OnePlus Watch 2 is absolutely staying on this wrist, well, switching between this and Apple Watch Ultra on my wrist for the foreseeable. This has ticked every one of my smartwatch boxes. Connectivity, download music onto it, large display, easy to read and direct sunlight, waterproof. 
Oh, and the huge battery life. That's what I'm looking for. The fact that I don't have battery anxiety after half a day of using the watch is, is a bonus, unlike some smartwatches out there. So, to summarise, if you're in the market for a larger smartwatch with some of the best battery life on the market, the OnePlus Watch 2 is for you. If you are an athlete and measuring your fitness to the one-tenth of a second or this very fine margins, the OnePlus Watch 2 is not for you. If you're on a budget, the OnePlus Watch 2 is for you. And even if you've got a lot of money, I mentioned already, while the Tag Heuer Connected looks really nice, arguably I would say the OnePlus Watch 2 looks very similar, you don't need to spend £1,500 on a smartwatch, just buy the OnePlus Watch 2. So well done OnePlus, an absolutely drastic improvement over the original OnePlus Watch 1. Let's see what they can do for next year's OnePlus Watch 3, and while we're talking about OnePlus, Let's see what the OnePlus Open 2 and the OnePlus 13 looks like because OnePlus are doing fantastic things. If you've enjoyed this video, please smash like. If you've not already, hit the subscribe button. And until next time,